Okay, this is the October 30th meeting of the Conway Select Board. Uh, first item on the agenda is minutes for October 16th. Has everybody reviewed the minutes? Yeah. Yes, I got it. There's one correction that needs to be made. Okay, what's that? On the verse says minutes of an October 2nd. It's got me listening as introducing your article and making a motion to second it. That's not right. He seconded it. Oh, yeah. Okay. But the two Roberts messed up. Mm -hmm. Got that, Lisa. That's it. Here, Tom. Robert, Robert. All right, we'll just. That's we'll the just only thing I can find on it. Break around right okay. here. Everything else is good? Everything else is good. Okay. I seconded it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes as amended. I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, we also have minutes for the Thursday, October 19th meeting. Um, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for the October 19th meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. All right, the next item on the agenda, we have three um, warrants. We have a vendor warrant for $99,771, a payroll warrant of $107,271, and a payroll deduction warrant of $28,497. I'll make a motion that we approve those warrants. Do I have a second? Second. Hmm? Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Next item, meetings attended by select board members. Bob? So we had a busy week this right. week, so I'm going to list all of the ones, and many of them you guys were at, too. Right. But anyway, so, we, so I, we had a capital improvement meeting with Dana, and so we'll talk about that meeting in a little while. Okay. Um, perhaps not a select board meeting, but as a select board, I got invited to an opioid forum that was put on by Richie Neal in Shelburne Falls, and, and it's great that opioids are getting a lot of attention. Uh, it was a good discussion. A number of police chiefs, the Deerfield police chief was there, the Shelburne police chief was there, um, and we still have a long way to go. Uh, we had an FCAT meeting this week, but I'll have to write them all down. Um, we had a meeting, uh, a select board meeting Thursday to talk about the tax rate, where we set the tax rate. Uh, Earlier last week, we had a, a meeting with Frontier where we talked about a bond request that Frontier was looking, what is it, mm -hmm. three and a half million dollars, I think, to to do a lot of um, unfunded and and, uh, and and maintenance that's been let go for a long time. And and it was, it was a good meeting. The, the idea's got a long way to go. There was a lot of opposition to the amount of work that had to get done and what it would cost us on all of our taxes next year. So Frontier's gonna go back and look at that. Uh, last, was it Friday? We had a, a there was a forum of, of uh, public health um, committees from all of the towns mm -hmm. and, and some selectmen from various towns uh, sort of congratulating uh, FERCOG and for the, all the organizing they've done for, for for uh, all uh, for a lot of public health issues, mm -hmm. uh, it was it was, a, it was a good meeting, good turkey supper too, and uh, and perhaps also not a select board meeting, but but a lot of people from Conway went to Mike Haley's storytelling that that Bob uh, put on uh, last Friday, and uh, and we we all heard uh, uh, the reading of a number of good adult stories, and uh, and. And raise raise money for a couple charities, so it was excellent. Very good, Robert. Well, I attended several of the meetings. Bob went to the uh, the meeting we held about the set of tax rate, and also the meeting uh, at the Frontier Regional with the uh, school board. And I think that Frontier Regional meeting was very good. I think after all of us talked to them, I think they think in a little bit that they do have a lot more work to do now. But they, I think they at first thought they were going to be clear sailing on it, and they soon found out that they were nowhere near close to bringing it to, to town meeting, I suppose. Okay. And I did go to the Friday night one with the Mike Haley put on it. Yeah, it very good. So. Okay. All right, last week I had the uh, Franklin Regional Council of Government's Executive Committee meeting. 
Uh, that's always very interesting. Um, then I had a Franklin Regional Council of Governments full council meeting, which I couldn't get out of because I'm the chair of that <laughs> meeting. So I had to miss our select board meeting as well as the FCAT uh, board meeting. Uh, but that, that went very well also. I had good attendance, although we didn't have a financial quorum. So we had to table a couple of financial situations till next meeting, but uh, everything else went well. Okay, next item on the agenda, citizens' concerns. We have any citizens' concerns? Hearing none, we'll go on to old business. All right, consider joining communities forming the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District. You're on, Carolyn. Well, thank you for inviting me, and um, I will try to make this short. I think the best way to just is to give you a little history of why Deerfield was even involved in, in trying to get this started. And the reason we were interested is because um, randomly there's no surveillance up and down the Pioneer Valley. And every time DPH did a test in the town, they, test, they trapped mosquitoes and tested it and said it had West Nile and you'd read about it in the newspaper. They'd get all kinds of phone calls and people were upset, like, what are we doing about it? What's happening? And, you know, we wouldn't know anything about it. So a couple years ago, um, Greenfield and Deerfield um, and Northampton uh, got uh, Vector Disease Control, Inc. It's a private contracting firm to do surveillance in town. And, and again, the reason, it wasn't just DPH randomly telling us that we had West Nile in town. It was just, we're kind of looking over the overview on this. This is, we, this is like where we were with ticks 10 years ago. It's, it's a starting of, of huge problems. We have climate change. Um, you, we have uh, drought and then deluge of rain versus a steady rain and you know steady climate we have hotter temperatures so you have shorter um, egg incubation times and um, the deluges leave little puddles everywhere and so what we're having or what we're finding is that there's west nile disease um, a viral viral uh, residue that is just in, in up and down the valley. But what is more concerning for us really um, is the mos there's like 50 species of mosquitoes, but it's more concerning to us is the four or five ver uh, species that carry other diseases like chickamauga, dead fever, and um, triple E. And we kind of are looking at this as a snow and ice budget approach in the sense that you have a residual amount that you pay every year, voluntary contribution, and you would get monitoring, and then you, it's up to you to decide how what you want for services. Um, and in Deerfield, we have a lot of ditches that haven't been cleaned for 20 or 30 years. Um, and so the idea is through the, you're exempted from most of your wetland regulations uh, the district. So if there's a public health need, you can do some ditch digging and cleaning out and um, under the supervision of this Mosquito District. And also you can go on other people's property to do, um, you know, sometimes it's, it's hard to get permission to go on, on all, everybody's property. So this gives you the blanket permission. Um, and so there's quite a few good reasons to do this, but I think the most important is, again, overall, is it's an integrated approach. You identify your habitats, and then you lob aside the ones that you're concerned about. So if you have a um, mosquito that carries triple E, for example, you know where it is. And if you have a bad wet year, like 2012 was a wet year. We remember 2011, we had Irene. And then we had a lot of rain, we had snowtober, all that stuff happening. So 2012, there was a lot of Tripoli circulating um, up and down the valley. And so you would identify where it is, and then you use VTI, you know, that biological little disc that you throw out. Um, last couple of years, it's been a drought. So, um, you know, it was really dry last year, and it was dry most of the summer. So there's not um, a lot of Tripoli happening, but there's a lot of West Nile happening. 
so you could put the discs in like your catch basins and you know stagnant water like beaver ponds and stuff like that um, and so the idea is you identify where your habitats are and then you don't do any treatment unless it's necessary and the treatment is your bio discs you know versus spraying by the time you get to spraying number one it's very expensive it's not as effective and there's so many environmental issues with it so the idea is you that's doesn't happen so you, you monitor everything you're doing public outreach one of the other things is our communities are getting older and who's who's at risk for West Nile is everybody over 60 so you know um, and we have more West Nile here in the valley because of the monitoring we've done in the couple, last couple of years we realize that we have one of the highest densities of, of West Nile um, but we didn't know that before I mean just other than the DPH would come in once in a while and catch a mosquito with West Nile. So we have more information, we have more data. Um, but I don't, I, I, maybe the best thing to do would be to answer some of your questions. This, this district, we intend to, um, we got a grant for 35000 to help the startup, and this is Greg Lewis from the FERCOG who is um, helping us organize it. And then our intention is to go and get a follow-up grant for implementation of this uh, district. We just got permission <coughs> from the state, uh, st state Reclamation Board to form the district. It's been a long process. They haven't formed a district in over 50 years, so, you know, it's been kind of slow. but. We got the 35000 that paid for Greg and Charlie Connecty to help us organize. And we're hoping to get, I don't know, we don't actually know what we're going to ask for yet, but it's more than a, probably $100,000 to get traps and trucks and whatever to um, you know, start this district. So hopefully there's no cost the first year, and, um, or min minimal cost. And then um, after that, um, we're hoping that people will want to still participate, and um, and it's up to you to decide what you want, what level you want to participate. And also, I mean, part of it again is part of the, is is what weather we have. If we have really wet year, and Tripoli e is is at ri is a risk, then then you're going to have more <coughs> services. One of the things that's kind of interesting. It's just anecdotal. I'm hoping to get a little pilot grant so that we can get brining equipment instead of salting equipment, but DEP a couple of years ago, as you remember, um, we had to um, pick up whatever salt, uh, sand we put on the roads, we had to pick up that amount. So everybody's been switching to salt. And as a result, the water from the, the state highways, which 91 goes up and down the valley, obviously, Route 116, 5 and 10, and then our own towns, everybody's using a lot more salt. So we are creating salt marsh conditions for you know more of the mosquito habitat, the Tripoli habitat. Mm -hmm. So that's also a very concerning thing that hopefully, you know, I'm hoping to get something through the Department of Agriculture so that we can, at least the town of Deerfield can have grinding equipment and we can prove that we're having less saline um, in our ditches along the highways. But it was attractive to me. I was not uh, for a district because the models have been, you know, the money comes off the cherry sheet, you're going to lose control, all this kind of, you know, we all know how districts work. Um, but after finding out what's the positives to, the, the employee of the district will be a state employee, so the state takes responsibility for the person. Um, our highway departments can work under the supervisory person, so you can throw your own discs out into the, your own catch basins. Like my highway guys um, did it this year, and it's instead of having it be contracted, because it's about 850 a catch basin, and you do it in the, over the period of the mosquito season this year, it was three or four times. So each catch basin at 850 times three mm. or four times. So it was, you know, about $2,500 savings for my department to just do it every mm. month. And, you know, we got the, the Homeland Security had given each highway department the GPS unit. So, you know, the guys are driving around, they can GPS 
the catch basin, it gives the time, the date, and everything goes into the computer. So there's a lot of things you can do yourself. Mm -hmm. But um, this would be under the supervision of a, you know, the Mosquito District Supervisor, and that way it's under their license and their liability. And like I said, I've had years of complaints of people wanting to get the ditches cleaned out a little bit because it's standing water in the middle of summer. So this allows us um, potentially to do, um, you know, some of the cleaning of our ditches that haven't been done for years. And, you know, you can remove beavers. I mean, there's all kinds of things to do yeah. that the district, that I, that I changed me from being, let's just contract this out to let's have a district. And the original um, communities that join into this, obviously you get startup year is free, but also if we get the grant, but also the they would determine who is going to be on the commissioner of the of the district. Mm -hmm. And then because it's a startup thing, and if we get a grant, which I pr feel pretty confident we do since we got the grant to imp to start up, go through the startup process, I'm sure the implementation grant will come through. Um, then, you know, we have to sort out if people want to join later, you know, what are we going to charge and mm -hmm. stuff like that. All right, so, so right now all you're looking for from us is, is support. Just if you're interested, yes. Mm -hmm. We would like you just to say that you're interested and send the letter. Um, Tom was saying that he needs it in, uh, you had sent it in, you got it in PDF it form and you want it. Yeah, no, well, then I can plug in Conway. Is there going to be something in, the, in this future program you put together for smaller communities like Conway that don't have only a handful of catch basins and very little water supplies that would be stagnated and compared to the bigger towns like Deerfield and Sunderland and Waverly or what? wherever they, whatever the bigger community's going to I mean, I don't personally wouldn't feel comfortable paying, like what, if there's only four towns, paying one-fourth the cost because of the size here. Uh, it, it would not be that way. Um, ho hopefully we're going to get a lot of towns to participate because a lot of towns are very interested. Mm -hmm. So the overarching cost will be, I, I mean, I would like it to get down to like $2,500, but we're saying, you know, maybe $4,500. And that would you would be a member for forty, and it's voluntary, and that would give you a certain amount of surveillance, plus your um, supervisor overhead. Hopefully, all the equipment has been bought under our grant, so that there shouldn't be any capital issues at all. Um, can I can I add to that? Yeah. Um, First of all, I want to apologize for being late. Um, uh, there was a tree, speaking of bad weather, across <laughs> upper road. It sent me all the way back up to Wisdom Way in the background. I'm got sorry. to meet one of your officers. It was nice. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm Greg Lewis. I do work for the FERCOG. Thanks, Greg. Um, public health emergency planner. So um, speaking to small towns, paying, to, paying more than their fair share of a, of a regionalization district is something that I was always worried about, too, because you know the disparity of population sizes up and down mm -hmm. the valley, especially including Hamden County, right? So what we did for this funding model is to make sure that towns are able to, as Carolyn said, pay for the services that they want as a la carte. So bigger towns, bigger cities that they want more services, they're not going to vacuum it all up into their town or city. They're going to pay for it. Um, this membership fee that we call sort of the finance and admin charge is going to be split evenly among mm -hmm. the towns. It's going to be up to the five-member commission. It's going to be five seats on this commission to make things even more level than, than that. I think that um, splitting uh, evenly a finance admin charge might still hurt a town of under 2,000 people uh, more than others. So um, one of the tasks for the commission would be to try to see if there could be um, some sort of scale based on sub, you know, population towns to pay a little bit less towards that membership fee, um, just so that we can expand um, and have more, more people in in the in the district um, and that's going to be one of our first orders of business is to take a uh, uh, measure of who wants to be a commissioner for this district now that it's been certified uh, which was sort of our big you know that was our first hurdle mm -hmm. um, last Thursday the certification no. allows the district to now put forward nominees to be uh, on this on this commission 
and uh, we're going to keep pushing for these letters of interest. It's you know, non-binding. Mm -hmm. It's just basically put it on your uh, warrant, see what happens in the spring. Mm -hmm. um, but for those towns that do sign the letter of interest, they'll be able to put forth nominees for this commission that we hope to get formed um, you know, before the end of the calendar year so that they can go forward with their order of business and um, they're tasked with setting all the policies of the district. Mm -hmm. All the funding mechanisms, all the budgets. Um, they oversee. So how all big will the district be? Uh, the, I was originally thinking it was the four towns, and now it's oh, sounding no, 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 much, no. much, much, it much bigger the, than that. It actually goes from the Vermont border to um, the Connecticut border. Yeah, uh -huh. I'll, I'll, I'll just, just pass these towns. around. <laughs> yeah, you got the maps already, the letters towns. of interest. I yeah. put a couple more things behind this map so that you can it's see yeah, 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 what's going on. Um, but the districts that have been around since the 70s, they are quite large. Mm -hmm. um, and this district is potentially as large as this red circle, mm -hmm. uh, but it's really only going to be uh, serving the member communities. Mm -hmm. um, so right now, I think in Franklin County, we've got a cluster of interest just with Deerfield and Greenfield. Um, and I honestly didn't send these letters to any town that's further than two towns away from the Connecticut River. Mm -hmm. So you got a letter because you, you happen to be within that boundary. Yeah, sure. Um, I think the Hill Towns, um, you know, maybe a later date if they're interested, but uh, we're really just picking um, <coughs> towns that we can get to with service vehicles quickly, okay. um, just just so it's, it's more efficient. Uh, so right, right, right now all you're looking for is support. Oh, from yes. From us, a vote yes. of support, okay. Because we, we're a little oh, pressed sorry. for time because we oh, got a yes. special town meeting tonight. Sorry, true, true. sorry. Uh, sorry. Any sorry. other any other questions? Um, have you one quick, one quick question? Have you involved or uh, been in discussions with the local boards of health? Yes, yes. mostly we have. Um, because these, before we did this a few years ago, mm -hmm. before you came into existence, mm -hmm. uh, where we the little dish were distributed to the towns. Yeah to put in the catch basin and stuff like that, and that was ran through your local boards of health. Mm -hmm. Yep, and before there was a district, the local boards of health would be the top official, mm -hmm. you know, in, in each individual town to make that determination. Um, the use of uh, other kinds of pesticides, that, that's a different licensing procedure mm -hmm. and sometimes it's handled by the highway department. Um, what this district offers beyond throwing a, a mosquito dunk in a, in a catch basin, is year-over-year -year surveillance of what kind of species and what kind of disease is kicking up in Conway. Mm -hmm. uh, the good thing is about that is it's consistent. The trap sites are where they are. Apples to apples comparison over time. You get to know if your risk is going like this or this. Right now we have sort of a scatter shot of traps coming up through from the state. And we just know it's high here. We just don't know where it is or you know, who's got what. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Very good. I think I, think, uh, uh, I, I would certainly uh, entertain a motion that we support the effort of uh, the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District. And, and there will be a letter for you to sign. Right. I'll okay. second the motion. All, right. All in favor? Aye. Thank okay. You. Great. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Great. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, Jeff. Very much. Carolyn, always a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great, what you do. <laughs> and great work on this, too, guys. Okay. Yeah. Well, Thank it's pretty exciting. Okay, yeah. Good luck getting home. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I know. I, I'm so bad. Yeah. I didn't realize you were coming down up the road. Uh, thank you, guys. For thank coming you. In. Good luck with the special. You. Uh, bye, yeah. bye. It'll be fun. Okay. Next item on the agenda: special town meeting article review. Okay. I'm not sure we have much to do um, in terms of. Just want to go review. over some motions. I think we can go right to uh, right to Dana. Uh, and yeah, I'll save the motions for afterwards. Okay. All right, next item on the agenda, uh, Dana, come on up. Clarity on the new equipment highway line item. Okay, what do we got? Okay, well, thanks for having me come to talk to you. Uh, I think the intent is to see if we're all on the same page here as far as what qualifies as a capital investment. Um, and what it should be is acquisitions costing $5,000 or more and having a life of more than five years should be submitted to the Capital Planning Committee for review. It was brought to my attention that the Highway Department had purchased a zero-turn lawnmower 
uh, cost him more than $5,000. And I called Tom and asked him about it, and he didn't know anything about it. He said he'd get back to me. Uh, after about a week, I called him again, and he told me, yes, in fact, the highway department had purchased his mower. Uh, wasn't sure how much it was. So I brought this up at the meeting last week. And Tom felt that because it was purchased at the end of June, uh, that it was in last year's end of the fiscal year. End of last year's fiscal year. And for whatever reason, it didn't qualify. Well, I think it did qualify. The thing, I guess, guys, that, that, that bothers me more about this than anything, that Tom didn't know anything about it when I talked to him. Bob didn't know anything about it until it came up at the meeting. I don't know about you two guys, because you weren't there. Um, it's a little disturbing to me that we would go out and purchase a piece of equipment like that. You guys signed off on um, paying for it, and it, I'm not comfortable that anybody really knew about it. I, I, I asked Ronnie, he was at the meeting, what was he going to do with it? Well, he was going to mow around the salt shed. This is a finished grooming mower. I don't know why we would buy something like that to mow around the salt shed. Um, it's purchased, it's been paid for, not much we can do about it. But maybe you could explain to me how this happened. Well, was it was it in his budget, or did he have money in his budget to, to buy it? He's had ten thousand dollars for new equipment in general mm -hmm. for several years. It was fourteen before that. Okay. Um, and uh, you know the way the budgets work. The, the bottom line is really what you're looking for at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And if he has extra money and he thinks he needs a piece of equipment, he has been able to go out and buy that. Okay. So in that line item, he had enough money to purchase this, this track? Yeah, it was, it was end, a $6,200 yeah. mower. And uh, he, had his, uh, he hadn't bought any new equipment out of that line item yet. Okay. So, so that had been, and, and that's been the procedure that he could buy out of that line item at yeah, the end of the and, year. And now okay. we're now we're moving into a more intentional planning okay. mode. All right. All right so now our policy is going to change yeah, change it, a little it bit. It just okay. smacks to me a little bit of the money is there. Let's spend it. Uh, and honestly, if it had come before my committee, I'm sure we would not have recommended it. Uh, I went up there and looked. That is not where you would use a zero-turn lawnmower. I think we have the equipment already in the highway department to mow that grass. We didn't need to spend that money. Uh, All right. and well, I, also, you know, capital improvements is, is long-range and advisory. Okay, it's not to approve everything that's purchased. Well. Well, how are we going to decide what we look at and what we don't look at? Well, again, it, you're, you're talking about long-term planning when you're talking about the capital improvements. Uh, it goes beyond long-term, John. It goes beyond that. It's $5,000 or more and a lifespan of five years. Or well, we're, we're looking at bumping that up to 10000 Well, you're not going to get a recommendation from me on that. Okay, well, that's what we're going to yeah. discuss at, at one point. I mean... Uh, I think that's a decision to be made by the Capital Committee based on what I have read and you know, what's been presented to me. Uh, anyway. Well, you can certainly have, have a voice in the decision, but uh, it, I think the Select Board approves all of the financial policies of the town ultimately, mm -hmm. just as, as the they approved the long-term financial plan as a whole. So that's 
that's part of that, but I, I certainly think that you know your voice is. I mean, we were certainly that. involved last year in, in Bob's purchase of a fire truck. So I mean, I don't know when you want to start this. I was under the impression this has been going on for a year and a half. This is not something that maybe we're going to do down the road. Well, we can we can fine tune these things with the capital improvements committee. All right. All right. But until further notice, we're going to assume that five thousand dollars or more in a five-year lifespan. We're we're looking at that. At this That's point. not my question. <laughs> so so where that came up was from Joe Markarian's policy. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. 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 And, and yeah. we haven't and, and that we haven't is, talked about that. Yet. That is select we board approved finished, that. Finished that. Yeah. We haven't the, finished it yet. The, the, no. the select board uh, approved the draft, the final draft that he sent yeah. um, a couple of months ago, mm -hmm. and or maybe. Not quite a couple of months ago, and and so we're all new to this, and we, and we do need to fine tune and make sure we're all on the same page. So sure. this is a this is a necessary discussion. Yeah. Well, okay. Thank you, Dana. I would just like to appreciate your input. Thank you. As before that decision was made, I okay. thought of that. Thank you. Sure. We'll see you again. See you later. See you in a few minutes. Oh yeah. <laughs> My next item on the agenda. Um, is the uh, oh yeah? Point, do you want to? Uh, yeah, just a couple of notes. Okay. Uh, uh, you all have copies of the motion and some uh, talking points. Some yeah. yeah, some of the salient features that uh, I think are, are necessary for people to have. To, yeah. So we're back in the warrant. Is that the, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. The, the motions especially. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, if you could just just look at some of those. Um, if, if there's anything you need to add to these points that I have underneath it, I think it's always a good thing to say some, whoever, whoever is presenting the article, it's a good idea for them to say something about it before a town meeting decides to vote on it. Yeah, yeah. Just I, so people who I, don't have an understanding uh, you I, know, have. I reviewed the motions. I think, I think they're fine. Um, on, on Article... Eight. It, it's eight. On Article 8, it says yeah. Article 9. I, I know. Because we, we cut out Article 8. Yeah. Um, the motion there is to move the town of approve the bylaw. The way it's written in the warrant is as a resolution, but that was my error because it is presented as a bylaw. It says this is a bylaw. So mm -hmm. it really should be should be moved as that because that's okay. what it says, and that will keep us out of trouble with the Attorney General. If so it it's going to be moved as a bylaw? Yeah, that's how it was intended, and uh, I should have recognized that in the warrant, but the warrant does say, or it's anything re related there, too. Okay. Um, yeah, that's uh, the main thing I wanted to point out. So, and any more uh -huh. n numbered items you have under there, you know, please feel free to add them and speak to them. But mm -hmm. this is, so people at least get a little bit of information for each one. Sure. Okay. All right, next item on the agenda is uh, the appointment of Jason Hunter as basketball sports director. Where does that come to us from, Tom? Uh, it comes uh, with a recommendation from Parks and Rec. You should have gotten a, uh, right. a letter from them supporting that. Mm -hmm. And uh, the idea here is that we've already uh, appointed him to Parks and Rec, yes. but this is a separate appointment, right. and sometimes the, the sports directors will be from Parks and Rec, sometimes they won't. Right. So we thought we'd keep it a separate appointment process just that they keep things clear. Okay. And at some point, they might actually get a stipend for that, too. They already have that in their budget. Uh, they have not been using it. Mm -hmm. um, right. So, yeah. so that's, uh, that's another point. It'll become more important to have a separate appointment if they do decide to go forward with a stipend. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion uh, based on the recommendation of Parks and Rec Committee that we uh, appoint Jason Hunter to serve as the basketball program director for Conway Youth Sports for a term ending June 30th, 2018. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, next item on the agenda is to approve liquor licenses. Okay, Conway Inn and Sunset Twi Trail Package. We uh, have not yet received any application from Sunset it doesn't, Trail. It doesn't look like anything's Empty. going on. We, we have there. been, uh, we have tried to get in touch with them. We have not yet received anything. Okay. I don't think you're going to get one. No, I, they, I think uh, the building's been vacated. 
it, it, it's up for sales. It, it would have to be approved by the end of November. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we haven't gotten an application. We have not yet. And we've them. tried to reach them. Yes. Okay. Then so it, you know. it, it could conceivably come back, but it hasn't yet. So. Yeah, the, the, the place looks empty to me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so for the Conway Inn, we're looking to approve a common vicular's license, an innkeeper's license, and uh, an operating uh, a permit to operate a weekend jukebox. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, Barbara's been there for a long time. This is a yearly thing that we approve these licenses, so I'll, I'll just make a motion if there's no questions or thoughts <laughs> otherwise. Uh, I'll just make a motion that we approve these three, uh, these, these two licenses and the uh, permit for an operating jukebox. Second. A second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. What would Conway be without the Inn? <laughs> All right, next item on the agenda is to renew the contract with the Pioneer Valley Veterans Service District. Again, this is uh, this is standard stuff. Yeah, no, it comes up every year. Um, any questions on this? No. Okay. I'll make I'll make a motion that we uh, uh, renew the contract with the Upper Pioneer Valley Veterans Services District as we have in the past. Uh, I have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Revised quarry policy is the next item. Uh, I can say a little bit about it. Uh, Lisa did the research for this. The uh, quarry laws have changed. The proposed uh, the the, uh, the quarry policy that towns have is slightly amended. We did give uh, the personnel committee an opportunity to comment on this and. Uh, didn't receive any objections to going ahead with it. Okay. Um, and it's just, it's standard state language that is the current state language. We need to put it into the personnel policy now to replace the obsolete language. Okay. So sure. we, we've done our research in terms of the, the current state Should language. Should we be guys? having our chief of police look at this and he's the one that has to do, do it? Look for his approval? Did, did we ask Ken about this? Um, uh, no, oh, Corey policy. Speaking of the devil. <laughs> yeah, the, Corey the, policy. The, the Corey uh, procedures were changed in state reg. We're proposing putting the current changes in instead of the old changes. Okay. I was just wondering if you yeah. should review that. And give us a recommendation on that before we vote on it. There are just a few amendments. The state language that the model quarry policy that was what we based our policy on mm -hmm. has the language has changed a little bit. Um, so this just brings our policy up to the same language as what's in the state. So, so is the change the text that's in bold here? Be highlighted for it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this this bolding is the only change in policy? No, there it's the entire policy has the state model policy has been substantially rewritten so it's okay. and we no, followed the state policy and we followed the state policy okay. in the past and this just would do the same thing with the current policy <clears throat> do you want to review this ken and do we want to table this until ken reviews it and sign this at, at the next meeting sure Great. all right all right, so we'll we'll just table this for now, on pending Ken's review, uh, and we'll probably be able to do that at the next meeting. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. No 
Okay, next item is discussion of free cash certification. Uh, yes. Um, did you all get sheets? And uh, so that is the sheet. Um, we got our free cash certified. What I've done is to uh, lay out the um, uh, the way that free cash is calculated is the the top box. Mm -hmm. um, the second box is if everything that is proposed to be spent from free cash tonight gets spent. Right. And then uh, for the last several fiscal years, I just give what the total amount was, what the amount was available in May, what the difference was, that is what was spent at a special town meeting, and then uh, what it was spent on over the last few years so that you can see what the, the history of that kind of activity has been. It's kind of an activity chart. Right. Right. So the total two hundred eight thousand, about three thousand more than last year, um, and spending uh, forty two, three forty two uh, tonight uh, proposed. That would leave us one hundred and sixty six thousand. Mm -hmm. um, less than we had last year. We didn't spend anything at a special town meeting last year. Right. Uh, more than we had the, the prior year. Okay. All right. Good. Looks that, fine. That three thousand dollars school safe study, school study. That's still up in limbo whether they're going to spend that money or not, right? Uh, I believe that, that we voted that we were. Oh, we didn't even have to vote. Uh, it, it's not. It's not going forward. It's going forward. We, we will. We'll get that, that, that will actually come back yeah. to us. Yeah. Come back to us again. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Any questions for Tom on that? No. Okay, next item on the agenda. Our treasurer collector is here. Hello. Come on up, Jan. Sorry. All right, now this is an item that was not anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting and it's something that we need to do before our next select board meeting. That's why it came up. Yes. Jan, would you give us a quick summary? Sorry to throw you off and throw it at you last minute. No, no, no. So, uh, quick summary. Um, the town has been a member of the Community Software Consortium since roughly 2005, 2006. And we used uh, software for the assessors as well as the tax collector. And uh, the software was developed somewhat by the state but is owned by the towns that are members of the consortium. Mm -hmm. The state was supporting it, um, meaning they were uh, technically supporting it, and a couple of years ago they announced that they no longer intend to do that, so we're all trying to figure out what to do for the future. Mm -hmm. So as you may recall, the assessors uh, were first to go, and they went out to bid, and they uh, brought on Tyler as a software company to, that they'll be using, and they're going to be starting for, I believe, FY19. So the collectors were second to go, and um, so we have uh, a, an access-based system that is fairly simple. Um, when the state said they weren't going to support it any longer, uh, w one of the state employees retired, the one who wrote the software, and has taken on the support for that. So we've, we've been using him, and he's excellent. Um, and it's very affordable, so I have some numbers to throw at you in just a second. Um, but the rest of the consortium, kind of as a group, thought it's, um, it's not really the way to go with a one-man operation, so they wanted to go out and look at other companies and other options for support or uh, a new software set. So I volunteered to become part of that group that went looking. And we put out um, our request for proposals for support, and we essentially got none. Uh, so nobody wanted to support our current system as it is. Other than the, the one guy. He didn't actually give a proposal for really? a contract. Uh, huh. He's, you know, he hmm. loves what he does, and he does it on the side, and... But he, no commitment. No commitment. Mm -hmm. um, and there are a number of people that didn't want to go that way, so it's a, it's a little bit of an issue. So uh, so then we put out a, a we, we, we started looking at software vendors and we put out a RFQ for quotes and mm -hmm. um, we got two companies that wanted to work with us 
and the one we chose uh, was quality data. So um, just to back up a little bit for prices, so we used to pay for our software uh, $1,975. And um, this one-man operation guy currently is about $1,600. And the new software um, is an annual support fee of $3,250. So, uh, but there's, there's more to it than just that. <laughs> so I'm trying to say this in the right order. Um, so it, if 11 towns participate, uh, this is the price that we'll get. And there's a conversion fee of 12850 but if, if 11 towns participate, they'll drop it down to 6175 So this company that we chose is a Connecticut-based company, and they're looking to get into Massachusetts because there's definitely a lack of companies that offer that software here. And this is what they're willing to do for us. So we, th we thought it was a pretty good price and I've been on the fence trying to figure out which way I want to do. I do have an option to stay with my old software with the one-man operation. It's pretty affordable. Um, but I thought that that may not be the best direction to bring the town in. Um, just because if he decides he's not going to do this anymore, I, I could be in trouble. And um, so the Community Software Consortium is also offering a pretty good deal for the first three years. Um, they're going to pay for the conversion fees in total, the first and second years in total, and perhaps 50% or more of the third year, depending on how many towns decide to join. Okay. So if I let this go right now, I, I won't, I'll be on my own in the future to do a conversion which could cost $20,000. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought it not wise to let it go at this point. Unfortunately, because okay. I, I really liked the guy I work with with my own software. I, I, I agree. So, do you have in your budget the difference between the 1975 you're paying now and the 3250? Well, uh, actually, so the first two years ago, there's, one, there's right? one more little piece of it. Oh, so, okay. the new software also offers um, the tax title, the tax lien processing part of it, which I now pay an additional, um, let's see, uh, 1361. So in total, pretty much wash it. Huh? It, it comes out yeah, just a hair yeah, less. About Six hundred bucks. Yeah. So, okay. Great. Yeah. So I think it's worthwhile doing, and I don't have to come up with it in my budget for two, maybe three years. Wonderful. And what if eleven towns don't do it? So then um, I could fall back on my oh, old could. software. Okay. Or although the the price of that uh, software, the new quality data software, is significantly higher. I think it was around fifty six hundred dollars a year which still isn't unheard of. You know, software is expensive, but we'd have to make that decision when the time comes. Yeah. I do okay. expect that right now there's only 11 members left of the consortium for collect, oh, sorry, 15. And 11 have um, expressed a lot of interest and maybe up to 15 may join. So uh, what they're looking for now is a memorandum of understanding similar to what the assessors did. So they want, it's not a contract, they just want you to sign that says, yes, we're, we like this, we're interested, and we'd like to yep. move forward with it. Okay, and that's this. So that's what I'm asking you to and, sign and tonight. And this is what you recommend. Oh, and yes, and so one more little thing. Um, the conversion fees, one of the reasons why they're offering, the consortium's offering to pay for it is they believe that we can get a community compact grant. Oh, that's So that great. may play a part in it. Um, <coughs> we may decide we don't need it, but we're going to go forward with it right now at this yeah. time and, yeah. and figure out how much we need. Okay. Do we initial this box? So I would sign under town CEO. Check right. off, yeah, check off the box. I'll initial and the box. And I'll come down here and sign. Do we have a motion to accept the recommendation of our treasurer collector? Agree. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I heard Bob second. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Thanks for that recommendation. I think that's the right yeah. decision. Yep. Town administrator update. Tom, you need to talk fast. <laughs> right. <laughs> I felt a little uh, under pressure here. Did you tell him? Just Sorry. a little. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Alan Singer, new chair of the Finance Committee, attended the annual meeting of the Association of Town Finance Committees. 
and is looking forward to budget season. We'll be hearing more about that. He's uh, especially interested in looking in the, the school budget process. Uh, as you know, we've gotten the fall tax bills out. Uh, we had hoped for only a two-week delay, but there were a number of details to be worked out, uh, which were dealt with with a number of staff. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for their patience through what turned out to be a more difficult process than expected, and especially the staff, and especially Jan, who put in a lot of overtime and worked hard to get all the details exact. Uh, You're sent out today? Mm -hmm. Uh, then I talk about free cash, which I already talked about in the That's agenda good. item. Yeah. Uh, more on finishing up the tornado damage. Uh, Panther Mail is done with tornado damage in the front of the Fournier property. They also cut down two trees by the school, leaving one for the town to remove. The highway crew will do the general cleanup. The cost for the tornado damage in the front of the Fournier property is about $10,000. Uh, we still need to clear the trail in the back we should be able to leave some of the wood on the south side of the trail, uh, requiring minimal removal from the hard-to-reach site. Panther Mill may be able to do that work as well. The total cost for this fiscal year's cleanup seems likely to stay under $25,000, which was the figure I gave the Department of Revenue as an estimate, which will go on to next year's tax rate. Uh, in preparation for the changing plan of the Hampshire County Group Insurance Trust, I've contacted Maya to get an estimate of their health plan for Conway. Based on what I've heard from other town administrators, they will probably not be able to match the Group Insurance Trust's plan. Okay. We have submitted to MEMA a draft of the FEMA grant for Delabar Avenue, and it is, uh, it has, uh, it is being reviewed. Uh, we did amend it, uh, and it's undergoing a final review now. Uh, once MEMA forwards it to FEMA, I expect we will have about a two and a half month wait uh, before the grants are finalized, but that should still be in plenty of time to get the, to get the town match on the warrant for the May town meeting. Okay. I'm working with the town clerk and administrative assessor on registering for the local update of census addresses in preparation for the 2020 census. After we get through the rather awkward registration process, the update itself should be relatively easy for Conway. Uh, I got the final documents for the ADA self-evaluation and transition plan today, and we'll put it on the next agenda for your review. That's great. great. Thank you, Tom. Concerns of the selectmen? No concerns. Good. We got some mail. You got your beacon, and you got your um, update of the demographic data so that you can read that tonight after the town meeting. There are no announcements. Uh, next meeting will be Monday, November the 13th, and the town office is here at 6 o'clock. There's no other business to come before the board. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you, Alyssa. Thank you.